our rugby heritage turns on schools like Bishops. This is where the Oval Ball was introduced to the country in 1861. And through bursaries to talents like Stormer Center Suleiman Hasenberg, it's where the game continues to grow. I think pursuing rugby has always been a thing for me, but I would say I kind of took it more seriously in grade 10. That's where I started focusing more a bit and be like, okay, I can take this seriously, I can take it to the next level. But I think it's also because an agent approached me then. I was like, oh wow, this is new to me. But I think from that point onwards, I kind of started focusing more on some different aspects and kind of improving my game. Also like providing the opportunity to go to university. This could be the door for me to kind of get a degree and still play professional rugby. Playing Varsity Cup for the Ike Tigers led to selection for the Junior Springboks and from there, a call-up to the Stormers camp. I think the thing I love most about playing for the Stormers is definitely kind of the environment you're in. There's so many guys that's been there before me and my brother who's played there before as well. It's, been, it's kind of like a comforting feeling as I, I'm kind of going into his shoes as well, but I'm also writing my own story at the same time. Suleiman will be one of our next Springboks. You know, he's already been put up on the SA Schools Honours Board and he was really close with the SAA side, I think, at the back end of last year on the tour to Europe. And I think for me, there's no doubt Suleiman will be a Springbok. And that's not putting pressure on him. It's just easy to see when someone is a great human being and he's got a talent he has and he puts all three together. It's a no-brainer. I think Wes as a coach was, was tough at some points, but I really appreciate it because I feel like he really wanted the best for me. And there's words that he's told me that kind of stuck with me always. And I always just like remember, oh, this is what Wes said. And I'm going to do it because he believes the best in me and I, can, I feel like I can do it. So I'll always try to strive for the best I can. Like I'm from Annenberg and there's not a lot of hope out there and people kind of stigmatize Annenberg being at this one dimensional community where it's like a lot of gangsterism and I feel like I would like to show them that you guys can do it, like there is hope, there is hope at the end of the tunnel, you can do it if you honestly just put your mind to it, you will succeed. We joined Suleiman at a suit fitting for an upcoming wedding and met head designer Abu Bakr Frizzler who has his fair share of star clients. Over the years, we've made uh, jackets for various Springbok rugby players. Um, we made uh, Sio Khaleesi's suit for his wedding when he got married to Rachel. Recently, we've made an Etzebeth suit for his wedding. Okay, okay let's fit the size on here. Let's go. Okay. Let's see. We're going to pin it up and we're going to taper it so that it gives you a nice clean line in the front and also it will clean up the back here. Well, I think the style that Suleiman has chosen suits his body shape because he's an athlete and uh, we encourage the younger guys who are athletes, they work out a lot on their upper bodies. So these uh, jackets are cut more towards their body shape where it's all fitted around the shoulder, around the chest area and then tapered in at the waist. There's a bit of irony in the color. He chose bottle green. Obviously, he's an ambitious young man. He has played for the junior spring box. And I think the next step up would be the seniors. I suppose he loves the, the color green. Not skittish about jinxing his chances at a national call-up, Suleiman is confidently wearing his aspirations on his sleeve. For well, playing with spring box is definitely something I'd want to do. And I don't think I'd look too bad in the green, but yeah. <laughs> To honor his Cape Malay heritage, Suleiman decided to up his cooking game, inviting his bestie, Amara Abrahams, to a class with the Boa Cups famed Faiza Abrams. Hi, Salam Suleiman. Welcome. And Amara, welcome. People come here from all corners of the world. They come to my home and I do a cultural cooking experience with them. And then after that, they eat. I'm really excited. I mean, I think a Malay dish is done. Everyone knows like a curry or a biryani. People make it differently. So I'm excited to see how it's here at Faiza's kitchen compared to like my own home. I do dabble in a bit of cooking. It's quite fun, uh, therapeutic in some sense. Only if I need to, not all the time. If I have to make something, I think I'm pretty good at it. I did consumers as a subject. And whatever I do make and I put my mind to, you've had some of my cooking, it wasn't yeah, that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. And I think some of the dessert is actually really good as well. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I love yeah, baking. So, yeah. What we're gonna make now, we're gonna make roti, but it's flaky. 
cake malay style. Secret in making a nice flaky roti is how you're going to make the dough and how you're going to roll it and fold it. So there's twists, it's almost like a cinnamon bun, and that's what makes it flaky. Plenty butter, not a little butter, don't be stingy. When the roti is ready on the heated pan, it starts to bubble on top. And once the bubbles form, you can take a peek and then flip it over like a pancake. When it comes off the, the, the stove, uh, it needs to cool down a little bit and then roll it up. Ready to eat. The thing that stood out the most for me, I don't know about you, but it would be the spices. Mm. Like you can kind of taste the difference in, in the, like the freshness of the spice, where sometimes you can kind of see when the taste is not as strong. This curry, you could feel that uh, um, the taste was very strong and you can kind of taste all the different spices coming together. It's how quick it took. That shocked me. I don't know, people, I think people assume that making a curry takes very long and it's hard work and it's like hours and hours of cooking but it was like 30, 30 minutes and then the whole dish was done so I was shocked by that. It was a great experience and I think for me coming to learn someone else's recipe it's always fun and I think this kind of speaks about our culture as well where people are always exchanging recipes with one another and you kind of it's just get that sense of community if you feel like your recipe needs a bit of alteration mm -hmm. then you kind of just what do you do different and you kind of just steal something from that and kind of incorporate into your own. I enjoyed cooking with you I think I have made some mousses before that's not my favorite one to do because it's takes long but I think making the curry was my favorite part yeah. just to see like the different layers and like how things all come together at the end. I think the most enjoyable part was spending time with her and also like coming to this space where for me I would, I would like I'm, I'm in South Africa and I never really come to book up like quite a bit and kind of see go to other people's houses in book up and I think for me this was a definitely new experience and um, I, I loved it. Sweeter still will be for Suleiman Hudsonberg's Cape Malay community to one day see him as a fully-fledged Springbok.